What kind of world do I want to live in? I think about this question a lot. For our generation and for specifically my group of people, which is refugees, the circumstances might dismantle any vision of the future that we have. You're trying to rebuild, you're trying to make a future for yourself, and then the climate related disaster comes and you start again. It's not about how it's affecting you now, it's about how it's affecting you your entire life. First step to understand is that we're all a part of it. None of us are going to be left out by the crisis. We're at a stage where if we don't act now, really there won't be very much left. There are generations that will never see certain things that we grew up seeing in real life. We have to start treating this like the emergency it is. To achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, we have to go from an intention to a serious commitment. Business leaders really need to rethink how they conduct their business and invest in creating systems that are climate friendly. The action I would like to see is accountability. Structures being put in place where countries aren't just asked to do something, but they're kept accountable to the decisions that they make. There has to be that strong collaboration between government, between corporations, between youth activists to drive change forward. The world I would want to live in is a world where imagining the future is not a privilege. I want to live in a world where people do not give up on hope, hope that a positive change is possible. The fact that you're listening today means that you are willing to make a change. Welcome, this is the Sustainable Development Impact Summit 2021, and we carry on with the next session, Sport as a Unifying Global Force. My name is Sasha Vakulina, I'm Euronews Senior Business Editor, I'm going to be moderating this session. From the unified flag at the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics to the creation of the first refugee Olympic team in 2016, the world's largest sporting events have celebrated many feats of unity. And while COVID-19 has demonstrated the connectedness of people all over the world, it has also exposed fractures in society caused by inequalities amongst different segments of the global population. Sport is uniquely positioned to be a driver for inclusive change. How can it enable much needed opportunities for the world to come together and fast track inclusive change? This is what we'll be discussing here now with the speakers and you. If you are watching this session online, following it, please do reach out to have a say. We want to hear what you think about it. And let's check Slider. This is how we will be hearing from you today. And to open this session, I want to ask all of you online to answer this question on Slido. In what areas can sport make most social impact? We really want to hear from you. This is such an important session within the summit. In what areas can sport make most social impact? impact please let us know what you think and if you are on twitter please use the hashtag sdis21 i will bring your comments and questions to our speakers and it's my great pleasure to introduce them to you now here with us now is john shell chief executive of sam manchester united foundation joyce cook chief education and social responsibility officer at fifa and Chatri Sitiudong, chairman at One Championship. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Thanks for being here. It's really a great pleasure to be here with you and moderating this session. And let's check it out on Slido if we have the first answers on the questions on what areas could sport make more 
impact. This is the one that we want to hear from all of you watching us online. That goes with different areas, goes with inclusivity, gender equality, and the other areas. Please keep those answers coming. These are the subjects we're going to, of course, discuss now during this session. Uh, John, let's start with you. So what areas do you think sport could make more impact and how can the revival of sports with fans shape a more inclusive recovery? Uh, thank you for the invite, Sasha. Um, Manchester United Foundation are the charity of Manchester United Football Club. Um, we've chosen to, to be very strategic and probably... You know, one of the biggest things around coming out of the pandemic is how do we engage and educate our youth to make tomorrow a far better world? And we are very much an education youth charity. So we work with young people in, in and around the Greater Manchester area um, from 5 to 18 years of age. And the idea is to actually to help these young people who are... Um, who find themselves in less fortunate circumstance to find solutions to their problems so that eventually, as they grow into adults, they become um, contributing adults. Uh, and again, I can only speak from a UK perspective, but it could be the same around the world that, you know, we all have these very much developed um, education systems that tend to be around academia. And yet our children... And our young people are actually are actually more aware, they're more sophisticated than we were. So they are looking for a better future. They do, they do want to contribute, they do want to agitate, they do want to get involved and activate. Um, and we want to give them that opportunity to take a greater role in the future that they're creating for themselves. Um, you know, I think and I actually go into schools full of teenagers and sometimes I think it's um it's it's a little bit distracting for them that an adult is coming in as a guest speaker and apologizing to them usually at teenage levels we all point the finger and saying you're doing this wrong you're doing that wrong actually in terms of sustainable sustainability our generation are now relying on the younger generation to put it right and so we as we as a as a as a massive and that that's the thing that sport has it has a magic, particularly with youth, it has a magic engagement factor that they, they, they do start and listen to what you say. And then it's the quality of the staff in front that, that make them listen longer and harder and more sustainable. But, you know, we're, we're saying to them, this is your world. You need to, you, you can let the world control you or you can control it. We want to be in a position where we educate and empower our young people to control it. And, and, in my experience, if you trust, if you if you if you arm the young people um, and you you trust them, they don't tend to let you down. You give them the opportunity, they don't tend to let you down. So it's it's going in and and what we do as a charity is empower our young people to take charge of their own lives. John, let me ask you this: When talking to the younger generations, to those young people, do you get that feeling? Because I feel quite often that they are more involved and they're more engaged when it comes to the issues of sustainability, of inclusivity, and they're more about holding the other, the older generation, accountable for that. Yeah, I think I think they're, they're because of the world that they're in, they're far more sophisticated than we ever were. They've got. They've got everything they want at the, the end of the hand and they've got the answers there. And, and so for me, education has to change. Education has to be what a thing that asks more questions than the one that traditionally gave answers. And I think if, if we can provoke and activate our young people into asking those questions and demanding answers back, then there's every chance that they will take on the mantle and will we'll try and create a more sustainable world for themselves and for their children. Thanks so much. Uh, Joyce, what's your take on that? And what role should like sporting leagues play when it comes to driving this uh, cohesion in society? And how can this be done? 
Thank you, Sasha, and, and to uh, John and to Chatri as well. Um, it's a real honor to be here today. I really appreciate it. This is a really deeply personal topic for me. Indeed, football gave me my life back when I became disabled at the age of 40. So I understand firsthand the power sports can have in so many ways. Um, I'm an openly gay disabled woman in sports and I've worked in and around sports for 20 years. So I have personal experiences in that regard. But I'd like to really consider the three maybe key areas that we can think about today and to just put them on, on the table for discussion, if I may. I think we have the ability of sports to do the three following things. Firstly, the promotion of socially responsible practices and in how we as sports conduct our own operations. Secondly, by incentivizing the third parties we work with, requiring that they uphold international standards and best practice too. And thirdly, by using our platforms, our voices to raise awareness about wider societal issues by working with organizations outside of sports as well, and by putting sport at their service for the goals that they are setting to achieve. And of course, sports has an obligation to do too. If we look at the first, we have to ensure that sports organizations operate in a socially responsible way themselves. If we don't have our own houses in order, then we cannot reach out to others and expect them to do the same. For FIFA, this is included a number of steps to put human rights into our statutes and to implement programs to make those words actions. Secondly, we uh, consider that sports governing bodies such as FIFA have an important lever to promote social change by incentivizing others to do so. We've introduced stringent environmental and human rights requirements into the bidding processes of our major competitions since 2017. If this is done in the right way, it can incentivize host governments, organizing entities, and the companies involved in the preparation and delivery of the event, but also to take strategic measures and foster positive social legacies for the longer term. For example, through robust due diligence processes to address uh, human rights related risks, collaborating with trade unions, monitoring, enforcing labor rights standards of construction companies, service providers at our mega sporting events, through training programs of the personnel involved in delivering those events to recognize, for example, and to address discrimination and by embedding preventative safeguarding measures to protect youth and vulnerable adults from harm. Many international sports body, bodies also, like FIFA, run development funding programs for their national federations. Ours is the FIFA Forward Program. And these programs too can be tied to social and envir environmental obligations and to positive social legacy. And third, and in many ways, most far reaching of all is the way in which sports bodies such as FIFA can promote social change by using the popularity of the sport to, to build global alliances and joint actions and using the power of football and other sports to raise awareness on key global issues. Since 2018, we've built strong partnerships with the likes of the World Health Organization on health, UNODC on corruption, UN Women on promoting gender equality, UNESCO on global education, and the Council of Europe, CARICON, African Union, ASEAN, and other regional organizations to help achieve the sustainable development goals. We're not perfect at FIFA, we don't claim to be, but we are determined to get better at this and to drive forward and to lead by example. We're proud to offer to our partners access to a unique global audience. More than three and a half billion viewers watched the, that's more than half the planet, watched the last 2018 World Cup in Russia, and more than 1.12 billion watched the FIFA Women's World Cup in 2019 in France. Through the current health crisis, we've run joint campaigns to tackle COVID-19 pandemic, fight domestic violence, and to remove some of the social stigmas around mental health, while encouraging people to reach out and seek help where needed through our legends. And more recently, a campaign by those same FIFA legends to support the global fight against racism. But there, let me end by saying this, there is no doubt sport is already a catalyst for social change from the little girl that plays with her friends in her local village to the most, most high profile sporting events. But there is so much more we can do. By collaboration with other entities, by reaching beyond sports and capturing the potential of sports as a unifying force and driver for social change. Thank you once again for the opportunity. Um, Sasha, back to you. Thank you. 
Uh, Joyce, thanks so much for this. This really informative, and obviously, I mean, this multi-billion people reach all across the world when it comes to these events. It's massive, but also it's also about the involvement afterwards and the engagement of the people on various platforms afterwards. Not just about watching, but also engagement afterwards on social media and so on and so forth. I have to bring this one to you. When I asked this question on Slido in the opening of this session, one of the answers in what areas can sport make more impact was gender uh, equality of course this is such an important issue for for all the speakers here and we're going to discuss and we're going to touch upon that but um of course there are lots of calls for fifa in terms of doing more on gender equality the topic is very close to my heart i i know that it's very close to yours what's your take on that one well, we are doing a lot of work. I mean, there's always much more to do. Um, you know, I'm really proud to be one of four women on the senior management board at FIFA. I report directly to the FIFA president. He takes very personal responsibility for my area. We have the first black woman as a secretary general of FIFA in the history of FIFA. Um, we're working really hard with our 211 member associations to improve the diversity and empowerment of women. And we are running programs to that very end, both regionally and at global level to empower and to ensure women can step into those leadership roles. And much more, we're encouraging women from other sectors and men too, for that matter, into football and into FIFA and into sports. We don't all have to have always been in sports to, uh, to, to work in sports. Thanks so much, Joyce. Uh, Chaudhry, let me uh, let me go to you now. I mean, this month, one championship did the very first all female card one empower. So you're obviously very concerned about the gender equality issue. But I would like to ask you on this one and also on what collaborations and cross industry partnership sports organizations could do in order to accelerate that impact and, you know, move forward with that. Sure. Um, you know, when I started one uh, 10 years ago, I had no idea that it would become, uh, you know, top 10 in the world in terms of viewership and engagement metrics as per Nielsen's uh, latest industry report on the biggest sports properties in the world. And what I tell my, my, my entire staff, you know, in our company, I said, look, since day one, our mission has been to unleash real life superheroes who ignite the world with hope, strength, dreams and inspiration. And so, yes, we're a martial arts organization. And yes, we host the world's greatest world champions to compete and showcase their skills. But ultimately, what I really believe in my heart of hearts is that we have a mission and our mission is to ignite the world with hope, strength, dreams, and inspiration. And how we do it is through values, heroes, and stories. By celebrating values that every family can celebrate with their kids and grandkids. By telling stories of our heroes, heroes who genuinely inspire and unite entire countries. Telling their stories of overcoming adversity, tragedy, poverty, despair, whatever it may be, to elevate the human spirit, to dream more, do more, and be more in life. And ultimately, that is what, for me, one represents. And actually, our hashtag is we are one. And uh, to your point, you know, two weeks ago, we held the first all-female martial arts event in the history of the global stage of martial arts. Uh, it's called One Empower. And we showcased the very, very best female athletes on the planet broadcast to 154 countries around the world. And here's the thing, after the event, we crowned uh, multiple world champions, but after the event, I, I held a company meeting. I said, everybody who saw tremendous athletic performance, incredible display of sportsmanship, heart, grit, resilience, athletic ability, et cetera. But I said to everybody, what you didn't see was our mission, that everywhere all over the world, in tiny villages, all over cities, that little girls suddenly had a dream that anything was possible because they saw a very powerful, intelligent, strong, uh, dynamic, and beautiful woman on the stage competing, that suddenly they could say, you know what? I can be a doctor. I can be a CEO. I can be a teacher. I can be a nurse. And what I told my team was, watch, five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, there will be women all over in all walks of society, and they will say, I watched more than power when I was 15 years old, and I decided to be a CEO, and that's why I'm a Fortune 500 CEO today. And I decided that day that I was going to be a doctor, and that's why I'm at Harvard Medical, or I wanted to go to Hollywood and be the first female you know, studio exec, or whatever it would, your, your, your dream is. And that, at the end of the day, is the essence of one and the essence of sports. Um, and so I agree with um, uh, John and Joyce here that you know, the ultimate aim is to unify uh, to celebrate the very, very best of humanity. 
And so for us, we've always used our platform and our voice for different causes. So whether it's gender, in, uh, gender inequality and, and alleviating that, you know, in Asia, there's four and a half billion people here, and yet gender equality is a massive issue. Uh, poverty alleviation, we've partnered with Global Citizen, the likes of Global Citizen, or, uh, you know, uh, for health issues, Children's uh, Cancer Foundation, um, and, and a plethora of different uh, causes, but it really circles on underprivileged kids, you know, health, and uh, gender, and, and, and um, wealth uh, gap alleviation. Those are the causes that we really care about here at One, and we use our voice, our platform, our heroes. Again, values, heroes, and stories. Uh, and nothing is more um, impressionable on, on a young child than his or her hero uh, and how they treat people. And so what I tell our team every day, I tell our team every day, I said, guys, girls, we are impacting society, culture, values. We are impacting how little girls, how little boys treat little girls, how little girls treat each other, how women treat each other, how children treat their parents and grandparents, and ultimately how we treat each other uh, despite our differences, whether it's education, gender, uh, uh, um, you know, socioeconomic background, educational, whatever the walls that might divide us. Um, through our values here and stories, we are breaking down walls and at the end of the day, per our hashtag, you know, we are one. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's definitely like the beauty and this amazing power of sport to do so and to reach to so many uh, boys and girls, younger, older, and to really unite them in the, in the best possible way. And when it comes to the areas uh, where sport can make most more impact in, of course, uh, it's also about as you said just now, Chitri, about also athletes' examples and also the players encouraging them to lead that example. But also one of the very important areas there is when it comes to racial injustice and discrimination. This is, of course, was one of the most popular answers. This was what people have been talking about on social media, bringing that up when it comes to sport. You all know the recent events, and this is how it this is another area that is super important now for all sports. Now, how can sports organizations support players, fans, and others in sports ecosystem to embrace this inclusive change? John, would you take this one? Yeah, um, obviously taking the knee is something that's um, that's been happening in the UK for the last 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 season. Um, it is it is things that have been debated. Is it enough? Um, is it enough to do? Uh, and that that's you know op opening the debate, which is all good stuff. I'd I'd like to take up on 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 Chatteris piece as well, really. That mm -hmm. you know we're we're part of one of the biggest sporting organisations in the world, uh, but there seems to be there seems to be a little shift in allegiance to whether that be to an organisation or to a person. And mm -hmm. I think not just not just in sport, but in the corporate world. Um, leaders have to start leading they need to start taking responsibility because it's only when it comes from top down that then the others get involved you know we, we all know now you know corporate social responsibility is is something since pandemic that's grown um and and nine times ten that's because it, it it is it is the right thing to do but it also helps the corporate um messaging from those but sport is a great vehicle in which to get the messaging across you can do that as an association like Joyce you can do that as an organization like Manchester United but actually the individuals which is which is quite hard because when when people are at the height of their sport they tend to be young they tend to be totally dedicated to their sport and they tend to have skills in other areas that make them the best footballer the best basketballer the best they create such a such a, a wealth of engagement with their fans mm. that actually you know fans of organizations now move with the individual so is it something that is it something that we can challenge our leaders in the world to step forward and to whether whether that across all across all the areas of sustainability how can we educate how can we give them a platform how can we make them understand the role that they play on the field, on the court, on the mat. It's just as important to be as active off the field, off the mat, off the court, because they are so powerful. Thank you so much. I'm going to bring you all watching this online back on Slido because I'm going to ask you another question before I go to Joyce now and Chatri on this. 
Uh, the question we want to ask now with this, with this discussion here on the session with our speakers, what's been your biggest take away from this session? This is the question we're asking on Slido to everybody who's following this online. Please do reach out. We're going to follow that. And as you do, uh, Joyce, what's your take on, uh, on what John just said about leading these by personalities and leaders have to start leading? Well, I, I think there's several ways to look at that, and John's absolutely right, and so is Chatri. You know, we, we lead from the very top within the organisation, but we also have this unique ability in sport to call on our, our legends, on our athletes, our players. I think we have to be mindful sometimes that they have a, day, a job that they do um, and of what we ask them. And we tend to focus a lot at FIFA on the legends, um, you know, once they step back from their intensive career, that uh, they're more than uh, pleased to come forward and to use their voices. And, you know, I can say something on social media and I might get 20 tweets. But if we have one of our legends speak about a, a, a really critical area or a critical topic or a call for action, we get a, a, an incredible response. But we also, as organizations, as sports bodies, have to ensure that when it goes wrong, that we hold to account. And we have to make sure we have robust regulations and a zero tolerance, whether it be violence, whether it be abuse, and that's something very present in sports, or whether it be through um, acts of racism, xenophobia of any type, homophobia, and so on. And, and all of those, unfortunately, are prevalent across society and, and therefore across sport. Yeah, and then unfortunately, there is also this person leading by example and also setting a good example. But then sometimes social media definitely plays on the other side when it comes to the comments there and how to deal with those. Uh, Chaudhry, what's your take on that? Well, you know, again, because since day one, our mission uh, was very clear. It's, yes, of course, we have the greatest martial artists, but it, it, you know, our mission has been very clear about unleashing real life superheroes who ignite the world with hope, strength, dream, and inspiration. And we do it through three pillars, values, heroes, and stories. And, uh, you know, we uh, communicate, we select the very, very best athletes, but also we our alignment, we have a full alignment of our values, full alignment in terms of their journey and telling their stories. Um, and expressing their values often uh, uh, in and out of the arena. And it's very, very important that uh, the DNA of, of, of change and of, again, our hashtag, we are one of, of inclusion, of, of, of un unity, of unifying humanity through, through celebrating the best of yeah. humanity. It's an everyday thing. It's in, in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, not only of myself as the leader, but my entire company, but also all of our athletes and our partners. Um, and that's how we're able to... Um, make a positive impact on the world. Um, but you know, it really does start with every single individual and it is celebrating um, good behavior uh, and one that obviously promotes uh, a social, social uh, um, inclusion and, and, and elevates humanity. Um, and also, you know, it, re it requires us to punish those that uh, you know, might be detrimental to society or detrimental to um, positive change. Um, and, and organizations have to be willing to hold the hammer. And, and, and um, you know, ultimately, I think whether it's FIFA or Manchester United or, or, or one, uh, you know, all these, we are world-class organizations where if a child puts a poster of one of our athletes in the bedroom, we all want parents and grandparents to be like, wow, that's a great role model. Not because necessarily the child wants to become a, a professional footballer or, or martial artist, but because of that person's values and that person's story and, and that person's, you know, triumph over adversity and, and in chasing a dream and, and, and the humility uh, through learning and, and evolution. And, and these are the values that we want to impart on our children and the next generation, you know, as John eloquently put that, you know, the next generation, in many ways, of course, we're responsible, but we've caused a lot of global issues that I think the next generation can solve if they uphold the values of integrity, humility, honor, respect, courage, discipline, compassion. Um, and, and it begins, though, with our sporting properties as, you know, we create magical memories for our fans. We create emotional connections with our heroes. We're able to tell stories. And, and I really believe in my heart of hearts that stories is the most powerful way of affecting change, especially for a young mind. You tell them a story about one of their heroes and boom, something magical happens and says, you know what, I wanna do the same. And so, but again, it begins with every single person in our organization.
And in one of the in one of the answers we've just received from uh, from the people from our viewers online, those who are following this session, one of the answers goes really in line with this one, that says, a "Sports are not independent of sustainability and a broader conversation." And of course, this is why sport indeed is a unifying global force. Thank you so much for the speakers, to our speakers and to everybody following us online here in the session. We've heard from John Schill, Chief Executive Officer, Manchester United Foundation, Joyce Cook, Chief Educational and Social Responsibility Officer at FIFA, and Chaudhry Sitiodong, Chairman at One Championship. Thank you so much for this and thanks for everybody following online.